So far, we have learned how is the buck converter circuit look like, and now we would like to develop the mathematical relationship between the input voltage VI and the output voltage V out. Uh, now we would like to define the polarities of the voltage and the current through the inductor. So the current through the inductor will be defined as the current flowing from the left as shown here and the voltage of the inductor we're gonna call it VL which has the plus polarity at the side where the current enters this is called the passive sign convention then the plus polarity will also be on the left as shown here also for the diode the diode voltage is defined as the forward biased voltage which means that the plus polarity of the voltage across the diode will be at the bottom as shown here so now we are interested in defining the relationship between the input voltage and the output voltage. The circuit has two operational modes. The first mode is what we call the continuous mode. And in the continuous mode, the current through the inductor doesn't reach zero, which means that there is always a non-zero current flowing through the inductor. Now this happens when the load current is very large. There is another uh, operational mode for the buck converter, we call it the discontinuous mode and that basically says that the inductor's current will reach zero and this happens when the load current is very small. We are also going to assume that the output voltage to be constant, which means the ripple across the load is very small which means we're gonna neglect it so it's going to be a ripple free circuit also we are going to assume that VD is zero of course we do that to simplify the analysis so the first thing we're gonna look at is we're gonna see how is the circuit is working again we said that the switch gonna be on and off and we're going to control V out by controlling what we call the duty cycle or the width of the pulse when the switch is on. So if we look at the graph, this is the graph for the rectangular pulse that controls the switch. So you can see over here that the time period for uh, the uh, frequency of the switch is given as uh, shown here. So we called it TS. And then when the switch is on, that's when the switch voltage is high. So this will be the switch on for the switch. While the other one will be the time off for the switch as shown here. So what we are interested in, we are interested in drawing the voltage and the current for the inductor. Because in this circuit is actually the key to be able to derive the relationship between the input and the output is the inductor. So we're going to focus on the inductor for a while. We're going to consider the switches closing first. As shown here, we're going to close the switch. So we say that when the switch is on, it is short circuit. So we're going to look at the diode. What do you think will happen to the diode when the switch is on as shown here? Well, the diode becomes reversed biased. Uh, the reason it is reversed biased because the voltage at the top is higher than the voltage at the bottom. So what we have to do is we're going to consider the diode to be open circuit and we're going to take it off. So that's what we have here. And now we are interested in defining the voltage and the current relationship for the inductor clearly that the voltage across the inductor is easily defined when the switch is on. Uh, the voltage on the left is VI and the voltage on the right is V out. So we can say that the voltage across the inductor is nothing but VI minus V out. Now clearly that this voltage is fixed and it is constant so we can plot it as a straight line as shown here. And we're going to state that it is constant and it is positive. Now why is it positive? Because this is a step down converter, then the output voltage is less than the input voltage, which means that VI minus V out is positive value. 
if that is the case, then we can extract some information for the current, the inductor's current. So we know that the voltage across the inductor is also given as VL equals to L di dt. So the voltage across the inductor is proportional to the derivative of the current and by dividing by L we can say that the derivative of the current through the inductor is VL over L. Uh, this is extremely important property because we know that the voltage is constant. So if the voltage is constant, what do you think the derivative is going to be? The derivative is going to also be constant and because the voltage is positive, why the voltage is positive? Because we know that the voltage will equal to VI minus V out and that is a positive value. So we can say that the derivative will equal to VL over L which is equal to VI minus V out over L because that's what the voltage across the inductor is and we know that this is constant and positive value then we know that the current will be a straight line and it is increasing because we already said that the current through the inductor is continuous in this mode then we can plot the current of the inductor to have a positive slope and will increase from I L min to I L max and that is very interesting so let's summarize what we said we said that when the switch closes the voltage across the inductor becomes positive that means the current of the inductor will be positive value and increasing as a straight line this is happens when the switch is on now we are interested in knowing what will happen when the switch is off so we're going to come to the switch and we're going to turn it off so when the switch is off it becomes open circuit and when it is open circuit what do you think will happen to the inductor this is very important here the inductor has continuous current that's the property of the inductor if the inductor's current is increasing when you turn off the switch the current must continue flowing and the current cannot flow through the switch because we opened it then the current must flow through the diode that's why we have the diode over here and the diode will permit the current to flow when the switch opened as long as there is current through the inductor if there is current through the inductor then the current will continue to flow through the diode so now we are interested in looking at the voltage across the inductor so the voltage across the inductor at this case will be what when we do the KVL loop, we will say that the voltage across the inductor is given to us to be VL will equal to minus VD minus V out. This is just simple KVL loop in this middle portion of the circuit. Now we're going to assume VD equals zero, then this approximately will be minus V out. If you wanted to get the exact values, the practical circuit values you can use computer simulations to get you the exact values but for now to simplify the analysis we can assume that VD is ignored by any means VL is nothing but a constant value and it is going to be a negative value because VL now is equal to minus V out so it is a negative value so if we plot the voltage across the inductor we're gonna have a negative voltage across the inductor but also we know that the voltage across the inductor is L times di dt and now we can solve for the derivative just like we did in the previous case then we say that di L dt will equal to VL over L so since VL equals to minus V out then the derivative becomes negative value that means the current through the inductor going to be a straight line because V out is constant but it will be decreasing we will have a decreasing straight line current as shown here in the graph. In this mode, we say that when the current decreasing, it, de it decreases from IL max to IL min and the inductor's current never reaches zero. If the inductor current reaches zero, then we have a different mode that's called the discontinuous mode. We're going to discuss it shortly. So for now the current will go from IL min to IL max when the switch is on but when the switch is off the current will go from IL max to IL min. So if the clock of the switch is kicking we're going to have the same 
performance again, the voltage across the inductor will keep flipping between positive and negative and the current through the inductor will continue to go higher and lower. So now we are interested in obtaining V out and we're going to do that basically using this clever idea. We will say that the change in the current and the inductor's current in the on time will equal to minus the change in the current in the off time. And this is a very clever idea because you can see that the current will increase by delta IL and then it will decrease by delta IL. And it keep going from IL min to IL max and then from IL max to IL min. Uh, so this is a very clever idea. We're going to equate those two currents together and let's see what we can get from that. And also we're going to use the duty cycle and the duty cycle is defined to be T on over TS. So T on is the on time of the switch and TS is the switch in time period. So the ratio of those two is called the duty cycle. The inductor's current during the on time can be defined using the integral equation shown here. It is 1 over L times the integral from 0 to T on of the voltage across the inductor. When the switch is on, the voltage across the inductor is VI minus V out over DT. That will give you how much current increased over the on time of the switch. That will equal to the negative of the current during the off time. And the negative of the current during the off time is basically minus 1 over L times the integral from the on time, because the on time is when the switch turns off, after T on the switch turns off, all the way to the end of the period which is TS, and then the voltage of the inductor when the switch is off is minus V out. We're going to cancel the 1 over L from both sides of the equation. And then when we evaluate the integral on the left, we're going to have VI minus V out over T on. And when we evaluate the integral on the right, it will be V out times TS minus T on. Keep in mind that the negative sign on the left hand side of the equation have been cancelled out. But we also know that the on time is a function of the duty cycle. This is basically from the definition of the duty cycle. We can say that T on will equal to D times TS. That's by the definition as shown here. And then now by manipulating both sides of the equation, we can say that V out will equal to D times VI. And this equation is so powerful because it says that if the circuit is operating in the continuous mode, then the output voltage is a function of the duty cycle of the pulse. And that's so powerful and it is so simple to control. The pulse width for the switch when it is on determines the voltage at the output. So if the input voltage fluctuates, I can adjust the duty cycle to give me the fixed V out at the output and that's why the circuit is so powerful because of that simplicity in controlling the output voltage. The next mode for the buck converter is called the discontinuous mode and that is basically when the inductor's current reaches zero and this happens at very light load. The reason the inductor's current will reach zero because the current in the inductor is very low to begin with and as the circuit is being discharged or supplying the load with the current eventually the inductor's current will be supplied to the load and at this point the inductor's current will reach zero. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try to figure out how is the shape of the current will look like. So we will start with the clocking pulses of the gates. The gate pulses will turn on and off the switch and as we see here we have rectangular pulses and those rectangular pulses repeat every T switch and we have the on time and the off time. Now we wanted to investigate what happens to the inductor's current. The inductor's current will reach zero before the end of the off time. Then at the beginning of the on time the inductor's current will start from zero. When the switch just closed, 
the current through the inductor will ramp up linearly because the voltage across the inductor is constant so we will have a linear current that is ramped up from zero to IL max as straight line now when the switch turns off the current through the inductor must continue so the current will flow through the diode the diode becomes on and the switch will be open circuit and the current will decrease but it will decrease too fast that it will reach zero before the end of the off time that's why we call it discontinuous mode because the current reaches zero before the beginning of the on time in the next cycle the current through the inductor will remain zero until the next clock cycle and then it will ramp up like that again the time required for the current to ramp up happens when the switch is on and that's related to the duty cycle so we can call this time when the current ramp up from zero to i max to be d times ts where ts is the switching time so the duty cycle times the time period is basically the on time however for the current through the inductor to be discharged to zero this time we're gonna call it the delta ts time and that's why we call it the discontinuous mode because the current will reach zero before the end of the off time the delta is very important parameter for us so is the duty cycle when the circuit is running in the discontinuous mode and we would like to control the circuit usually we do not know what the delta is but we have control over the d which is the duty cycle let's summarize what we said so far we said that the inductor's current is discontinuous at very low load current when the switch is on the switch is short circuit at this point the diode is reversed bias because the voltage at the top of the diode is higher than the voltage at the bottom of the diode and that makes it reversed bias which means it is open circuit just as it was in the continuous mode then we can state that VL which is the voltage across the inductor to equal to VI minus V out which is constant and positive value now when the switch is off, that means the switch is open, the diode becomes forward biased, which will allow the current to flow through the inductor. Within delta TS, when the switch is off, we know that the inductor's voltage will be minus V out, assuming that the diode's voltage is zero, which is constant and negative value and that's why the current through the inductor was decreasing linearly to evaluate the relationship between the output and the input voltages there is three parts or three derivations we have to take care of and it will be a little bit involved but at the end we will have one equation that describes the output as a function of the input and some other parameters so the first thing that we are interested in is how much the change in the inductor's current during the on time well we know that the inductor's current always starts at zero but it always ends at i l max so we can say that delta i l on the change in the current during the on time is nothing but i l max and now we can evaluate that using the integral equation so that is nothing but 1 over L times the integral from 0 to T on of the voltage across the inductor when the switch is on when the switch is on the voltage across the inductor is basically the input voltage minus the output voltage so when we do the integral we will have 1 over L times VI minus V out times t on but t on is nothing but d that's the duty cycle times ts so now we were able to find the value of i l max the maximum current as a function of the input voltage the output voltage and the duty cycle 
and the crop which is things that we can obtain very easily and we can control very easily usually as a designer I determine what's the clock and frequency is and I can control the duty cycle the output voltage and the input voltage are given parameters of the system so in the real world all what I have to do is I will be able to control the duty cycle in the discontinuous mode and that will determine what's the maximum current through the inductor gonna be the second equation we're going to obtain is basically to equate the change in the current during the on time that should equal to the change in the current during the delta TS time. So we can say that delta IL on, that's when the current is increasing, will equal to minus delta IL off, that is when the current is decreasing. Now we can substitute for the current during the on time using the integral equation and that is what we have here and the change in the current during the off time is defined by the integral equation but the integral will go from T on at T on that's when the switch is turned off until T on plus delta TS which is the time when the inductor is conducting during the off time and the voltage during that period is basically minus V out now we can cancel the one over L's out also on the right hand side of the equation the negative signs cancel out so now when we calculate the integrals on the left hand side we have VI minus V out times DTS on uh, the right hand side we will have V out times delta TS so now we can easily find the relationship between V out versus VI as a function of delta and D because the TS on both sides of the equation cancel out since the TS on both sides of the equation cancels out we can find the relationship between V out and VI and now we can say that V out will equal to delta over D plus delta times VI. Now again this equation is not as robust because I don't have control over the delta by changing the current delta changes. So one more thing we need to do is we need to find the relationship between V out over VI by eliminating delta. So to do that what we need to do is we need to look at the average value of the current through the inductor because we know that the average value of the current through the inductor is the same as the current through the load because we know that the voltage across the load is constant or near constant so if the voltage across the load is constant the current through the load is also constant which is the average value then on the average the rippled current through the inductor should equal to the load current which is IO so now we can say that the average current through the inductor is equal to the load current IO now to evaluate the average current of the inductor we need to evaluate the area of that current so the area of that current will equal to the area of the on triangle plus the area of the off triangle and then we can divide that by the total period and that should equal to the average current so we can say that the area of the on triangle is one half the height times the base basically it is one half i l max times d times ts and the area of the off triangle also will be one half the height times the base so it will be one half I L max that's the height of the current and the base will be Delta TS we will divide that by TS so when we do that the TS cancels out now we will be able to find the expression for Delta and Delta will equal to 2 IO over 
I L max minus D by substituting for I L max that we found earlier on then the delta will equal to 2 L times I O over V I minus V O times D times T S the whole thing is minus D now by substituting for the delta into the V out equation and by using some algebra we can solve for V out to give us this big mess after we clean some of the variables we can say that V out will equal to V I times 1 over 2 L times I O over D squared times V I times T S the whole thing here is plus 1 and this is the output voltage as a function of the input voltage and the duty cycle in the discontinuous mode now keep in mind that the discontinuous mode is a function of the load current so it changes by changing the load current so to summarize what we did so far we said that we were able to control the output voltage or regulate the output voltage for a given input voltage in the continuous mode operation the relationship is very straightforward the output voltage is proportional to the duty cycle so we can say that V out equals to D times VI where D is the duty cycle in the discontinuous mode we said that V out will equal to VI times 1 over 2 L times IO over D squared times VI times TS plus 1 so a big part of the design for the discontinuous mode also is to size the inductor's current and the switching frequency so far we understand how is the DC DC buck converter works and we were able to obtain uh, the V out VI relationship for the circuit in the continuous mode and in the discontinuous mode of the inductor's current.